Do not cut down the forest with its tigers and do not banish the tigers from its forest. The tiger perishes without the forest and the forest perishes without its tigers. These are the age-old words from the Mahabharata. However, from the 1950s to the present, tigers in our country have gone down from 30,000 to barely 3,000. Today, nearly 10% of its total tiger population is in Chandrapur district alone. With the area being 50% of the forest cover, villages in Chandrapur are dependent on the forest resource for their living. With such close ban animal contact and infringement of animals' natural habitat, this area is not without danger. Last year, we witnessed 27 human deaths due to wildlife, the highest in any country. Are animals only the real enemy? No, it's because of the lack of understanding and coexistence. And that is what we have set out to change. My name is Guru Prasad. I am the Deputy Director for one of the many reserve forests in India called Taroba. Since childhood, my travel across forests of Karnataka, across Banergata region, have fed my passion for wildlife and nature. I witnessed my first tiger in a zoo on one such journey. And one thing that took was that wildlife should not be in enclosures. They have the right to be free in what is really their home more than us. Let me tell you something about Taroba and the Retiger Reserve. Taroba is a protected forest area spread across 1,30,000 hectare forest land exclusively for tiger conservation. One of the most beautiful bamboo forest regions in the whole of the central Indian landscape and houses 115 tigers out of the entire 200 plus tigers of Chandrapur district. Till date, Taroba is considered the best place for tiger sightings. Taroba forests are not only the homes for these animals, but they are also the lifeline for more than 1.5 lakh people living in and around Taroba region. They are dependent on the forest for direct and indirect benefits and collection of resources for dying needs. Thus, both people and animals are dependent on the same resources for survival. People go to collect bamboo, mowa, even medicinal herbs. Some even use the land for poaching wildlife. It is this infringement that has led to the conflict among man, animal and environment. So what is the solution? To try and resolve this constant conflict, the core and buffer zones were introduced. The core zone is the land declared for having least amount of human interference, allowing animals to live freely in their natural habitat. But people from adjoining villages were still dependent on the resource of this zone for their daily needs. Due to this, specialized buffer zone was created with the objective to reduce dependency of the people on the forest and at the same time generate alternate livelihood for these local villages. Let me tell you how we help bring such a change. Ecotourism in buffer zone became a great source of income for local villagers. Last year, we went from 6 to 13 buffer tourism gates and exclusive two-night safari gates welcoming tourists from across the world to Taroba. This is the highest number in any park in the whole country and all are solely managed by locals here at Taroba. Within this one year, other activities like boating, kayaking, cycling, Night logger stay, night machan stay, nature trail, etc. were all started by involving local youths. The locals even started homestay facilities for visiting tourists. We subsidized many households to help them promote ecotourism and encourage tourists to stay and enjoy the local culture. Due to these ecotourism activities in buffer zone, more than 1000 local youths from 20 different villages are getting regular income. Prior to this, Poaching, agriculture and other forest land dependent activities were their only means of livelihood. Now, they themselves are the protectors of our forest. Apart from ecotourism, since last two years, Taroba Forest Administration has facilitated the training, selection and placement of local youths in various companies. Even the local women have the opportunity of generating income. Thanks to the training provided to them in stitching, preparation of incense sticks, running camping sites, butterfly garden, and diorama. 
All of this has provided 170 women and over 200 youths with means of regular income, reducing the dependence on the forest land. However, living in such close proximity, encounters between human and animals are inevitable in the buffer villages. Crop damage, human injuries, and all, human deaths by wild animals are the major challenge for the department to handle. With 1.5 lakh human population and nearly 20,000 animal population, a strength of mere 200 forest personnel was not sufficient. To quote an example, in 2018, we witnessed five deaths in one month from a single buffer village. They were all killed by a leopard. And one of those five was a 10-year-old boy. So we decided to involve local villages themselves to combat raising man-animal conflict. 200 local youths from 40 sensitive villages were selected and trained to understand and mitigate wildlife conflict in these villages. Known as primary response teams, these local youths are at the forefront in reducing these man-animal conflicts. Tadaba Foundation also offers them an honorarium for all their efforts. Thousands of subsidized LPG connections and solar fencing were also provided through village eco-development committees. These developments have built a great relationship between administration and local villages. They have witnessed cooperation, willingness to protect and exploit the forest resources, and a renewed sense of respect for animals and the wildlife of the forest land. Many are willing to share information about wildlife poaching, helping us to detect the cases better. And last year, with the help of primary response teams, Nearly 200 hectares of forest land encroachment were made free for wildlife movement. We know forests are the limited natural resource. Every human being on this earth is directly or indirectly dependent on it. But that does not make us the sole stakeholders. The forest equally belongs to the animals and the wildlife that the land sustains. It is our duty and responsibility to conserve nature but also help the local light holders sustain without further damage. It is our responsibility to ensure the continuity of this peaceful coexistence. I want to leave you with an image, an image that depicts a world without this conflict between man and animal, a world where man's greed is not linked to the loss of environment, a world where we can build, live and let live harmoniously. Thank you.